Hey guys, Mike here. Welcome back to another video on the channel. I got a bit of a dry throat, not because of that, not because of that. But if you remember the last video, I pulled off the Dana 30 and obviously got the C's cut off and everything, getting ready to really build a long arm kit. And in this video, I'm gonna build a three link for the Jeep. And before we get into making all of that, I'm gonna show you the cross member I've built to support the control arms. So first off, my vehicle's a diesel. So if this is all looking a bit weird, this is for the diesel AX15 and it bolts to the underside of it. But if you remember the last video, I showed you I cut this mounting section off and I've mounted it in a piece of box. And we've also got these pieces on the side. Now this piece of box section just bolts on to these end pieces. And the idea is that these are gonna be welded to the frame stiffness. And if I wanna drop the cross member, I can take the four M8 bolts out or eight in total and, and just drop this down. It's really just the basis of the beginning. The real work's yet to begin, but I'm gonna get this bolted up. Come on now, join the shiny club. <laughs> So that's it all in position. Uh, it hangs a bit lower than I'd like it to, and it really can't go any higher. The clearances up there between MP231 and the bracket are, are pretty tight on the diesel, but I've got it marked in position where it needs to go. And it's been measured off the back of the control arm mounts and other such distinguishing features of the frame to make sure it's central. With the foundations in place, I can make a start on getting everything else in position. And step one is to loosen the old control arm drop brackets from my previous short arm lift. I welded them to the frame stiffeners all those years ago, and it seems like they're hanging on for dear life. Now though, the Dana 30 must go back in, in almost exactly the same position it came out, to simulate where it'll be when the long arms are built. It's not that difficult to do, given my control arms and my track bar were not adjusted on the initial removal. The tools I'm using, however, are very basic. A levelling app, tape measure, a bubble level. But with multiples of measurements along with squaring up the tyres, I think I've got pretty damn close to where I need to be. And now I can dial in my pinion angle. If you're not familiar with pin pinion angle, when you start lifting vehicles, it sort of goes out the window, especially on the diesel, because of the very short front drive shaft, which has a tendency to be eaten. Um, this is my third one in the 10 years I've owned this vehicle. So the whole point of cutting the season and rotating them was to try and stop that. Anyway, 10.5, 10.6, off the top of the U-joint there, which is really the correct place to measure, we've got 10.5. So it would seem that this drive shaft is actually pretty decent. The yoke on the Dana 30, there's not really a particularly good flat spot to measure from. You can sort of measure from here a little bit, but I wouldn't trust it. That says 10.7. Um, I've been sort of playing around with this and I've rotated it and I'm just using a nut to sit on top of the U-joint, which would be the best place to measure from. And if I take that off, I've got 10.6. 10.5 so that's pretty much as close as I'm probably gonna get it for now that would probably run really nice so within half a degree now it's time to get the C's in position and dial in the camber caster and pinion angle all together this is a job I've been anxious about to be honest but I've decided I'm just tack welding these things in for now so there's a way to go back if I screw this up they're tapping on very easily compared to the 30 tonnes of pressure that was required to take them off. And that's because I've taken away a fraction of the mating surface to make this process easier in my limited workshop. But this does mean I do need to do some serious welding and reinforcements at the end to keep them in position, just for safety's sake. But with the knuckles on and the brake discs bolted in place, I have a good flat surface to measure from. And it's important to get the knuckles as straight as possible to minimise any tilt. I'm using the levelling app while making small adjustments and to be honest this is a lot more work than the video is really showing. It's taken over an hour to get this all set up, lots of slight adjustments, measuring everything multiples of times, it's not been fun. But after what feels like an eternity I'm ready to tack weld these things in place. It's been quite a lot of work to get this all set up. I've got it within 0 0.1, 0 0.2 degrees into the negative. So that should be an extremely straight tire when that's on. In terms of uh, the caster, um, I wanted to aim for about eight degrees and I'm over that and I'm basically at nine. 
This side's pretty good too. Um, I think this one is not as good as the other side. 0 0.3 degrees into the positive. So actually, no, sorry, into the negative. I mean, it's still allowable because you've got a one degree fault of 0 0.5 to 0 0.5 positive to negative. So that is still really, really good and way better than it was before. That went better than I thought it would and hopefully things stay in place when I check it all again after the axle is removed. But now it's on to the fun stuff and it's time to fabricate the three link kit and specifically the long arms. And to do this I'm dismantling my original rough stuff short arms and turning them into the three link kit. This is obviously a bit messier than using fresh materials and probably not needed if you live in the USA. But here in Europe these rod ends just aren't easy to find, plus all the parts I need are here anyway so I might as well use them. I am however using new DOM quarter inch wall tubing for the control arms. This is called cold drawn seamless precision steel tube here in Europe and I'm going with 938 millimeters, which is about 37 inches for the lowers. Again though my tool selection consists of the basics, grinders, felt tip pens, rulers, butt plugs, whatever I can get I can use. And to be honest I quite enjoy the whole process although it can get a bit messy. I'm making the control arm brackets from 6mm plate and after cutting them out I'm tack welding them together so when drilled there are no misalignments. And I'm drilling them to M14 and plan on using a generic poly bushing that I can buy here as standard in Europe. And this will just keep maintenance costs down given I live in a country that use metric and not imperial. Well check it out, we've got some uh some big old control arms. I'm gonna call them not long arms, but I think they should be called dong arms. Two lowers, one upper. Uh, the upper's got a slight bend in, although I probably need to adjust the end. And, and I built this using the short arms from Rough Stuff, obviously. So the seven eighths home that end, this piece slid up to about there, plug welded everywhere. Same with this piece slid up, plug welded everywhere, and, and then welded around the top there. So uh, the next step, get them bolted in, get them tack welded in place. Unfortunately, the upper won't clear the old control arm brackets, which I've been putting off removing because I just know the horror that's to come. The lowers, however, are absolutely fine, and it's just a matter of checking some measurements with the control arm lengths, an axle position check, and the brackets themselves before tacking them in. And now it can all come off again, so I can weld the brackets in place. And I'm also going to add some small reinforcements to the brackets themselves, just to make sure the whole structure is very solid. It's turned out pretty good. I mean, it's not spectacular, but it's solid, and it's important that it's solid. It's gonna be welded to the rough stuff frame stiffness, so it needs to be able to take a beating. And just for good measure, I'm drilling three 14 millimeter plug welds in each side. So when this thing goes on, it's never coming off. But the fun's over, and hell has opened up once again, and the devil has handed me an angle grinder. And this time, it's the old control arm brackets. You'd think this would be an easy job, but I'm telling you, it is a royally shit one if you've never done it. The video just doesn't give it justice. It is definitely one for the worst job list. And what made it worse is having to remove the inner upper control arm bracket, which was not fun given how close it was to the fuel lines. To top it off though, my OCD just can't let this detail go. So I'm rebuilding a previously removed frame stiffening plate that was originally supplied with the centre section all those years ago. I didn't think that was something I was going to have to do, putting a frame stiffener in here, but the metal was so thin. I've got rough stuff frame stiffeners here on the side and in the centre and at the back, and I've just kind of bridged the weld against the side of this frame stiffener here and on the frame in the corner there at the back, leaving a drain hole because water can actually still get inside this from the inside of the frame. And I will squirt cavity wax up in there as well to try and minimise corrosion. Now I can actually put the cross member on. So 
there we go. Dong arms installed. One big change I had to make at the end was adjusting the angle of the upper link so it engages on that bushing and doesn't stress the bushing out. I've mounted it up a little bit higher as well so it sort of comes down into the mount on the top of the pumpkin um, just to get some clearance on the drive shaft as the axle articulates up and the tyre stuffs up. The contact point does get a bit smaller here but nothing to worry about at all. Cross members in position but not welded up. I'm not going to weld that up just yet. So this is the axle fully stuffed up, or about as far as it can go, given the bump stop would be here and be all squished up. So this is actually further than it would travel, but you can see everything's looking pretty good clearance wise. I've got about half an inch between the floor and this link. But you can see some other problems like the shock mounts now, the angle and this, this contact between the bump stops. This is all stuff I got to sort out when I pull the axle. One thing I was worried about was the contact points here, but there is so little movement in these arms. It's crazy, so you can see plenty of space. But that's it for this project. I've loved to have had it all welded up, painted and looking good, so you could have seen it in action, but I'm just not there yet. I'm probably gonna get those parts I just made powder coated, minus the cross member. And uh, in the meantime, I've got to pull the Dana 30 truss, sea gussets, spring perch adjustment, and also the shock brackets and the sway bar all need to be done. And then that's got to be cleaned and painted and rebuilt with new seals and everything. And I might as well check the bearings while I'm at it. So I've got a bit of a way to go and all that will be done in the next video. Um, but in the meantime, I just want to say a big thanks for watching. I appreciate all of your support. For my Patreons out there, thank you very much for your support. I really appreciate it. And um, yeah, hopefully you enjoy the video. And I'll see you again very soon in another one. Take care.